Hi, kitty cats. I am Amethyst Herrick, your hostess for Gender Identity Weekly, a weekly discussion about identity and gender from the contributors and guests of the Purple Paw Publications website, GenderIdentityToday.com. This content is brought to you by subscribers of GenderIdentityToday.com. If you are already a subscriber, first of all, thank you so much for your ongoing support. Subscribers not only receive new content directly to their inboxes as soon as it publishes, but are also able to interact with every contributor directly, which includes me, and hell, I want to talk to me, right? If you would like to support shows just like this one, as well as other podcasts, videos, and written articles by our contributors, please consider subscribing using the links you're going to find in the show notes. Today, I am so pleased to be speaking with Hao Motsame. Hello, Hao. How are you? Hello, Amethista. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Oh, my gosh. No, thank you for appearing. Um, Hao is a quantum witch doctor, African quantum witch doctor and psychic surgeon, which is just fascinating to me. Um, I understand uh, you, you te you're teaching others how to tune into their natural energetic fields, and this helps us build better lives, which is pretty cool because this is a lot of the same thought that I have. So this is why I think we're talking. So I'd love to start just from like a, li a little bit of, of a foundation level. Um, I know that this is work that you've done only more recently, right? Yeah, for seven years now. Okay, seven years. Can you can you tell us the story? How did you awaken all of this power inside you? That's a good question. And uh, I want to start first by greetings, I extend these greetings to your audience. So, Dumelang, Dumelang, Lokai. And that's the greetings in my native language. I come from Botswana in Southern Africa. And I reside in Germany, you know, for 10 plus years now. And mm. Dumelang... It's the words that we used to greet back home. And Dumela means agree. Lokai means where are you? And since we are here at Gen Gender Identity Podcast, my question is when you show up, you know, when we are being called by Amethysta, the amazing Amethysta, what are you agreeing to? You know, what is your intention? What are you yeah. willing to receive from here? And uh, when I say, where are you? The invite is to connect with yourself. You know, are you here fully or part of you is somewhere else? And uh, by connecting with yourself, because we know a lot, we learn a lot of information every day. And I believe there's, there's been many amazing speakers, experts who have been here. And you know a lot, you come in, you know a lot, you soak in a lot of information. So today what I want to invite you to is, can you tune into your body and just take a deep breath and breathe in and feel every sensation in your body? And when you do that, choose not to know. Because this is the first time I'm meeting Amethyst, that this is the first time we're having this conversation. So we coming through with a blank slate, not knowing what is going to show up in this meeting that we're going to have. And when we do that at the same time, may we let our body communicate to us rather than telling our body what it gets to feel and what it is, especially that we're talking about gender identity. I love that. So when we tune yeah. in with ourselves, with our body, what is our body communicating? Because at times we may refuse and tell it what we know since we live in a world where we are told who we are before we can find out who we are, right? We live in the culture, tribes, family, societal, religious, political, medical systems that are telling us who we are. But when you tune in with yourself, who am I being? What is my body desiring? That is a very, you made one statement that was, that I, that really hit deep. I don't know what kind of expression I made, but you said, choose not to know. I love that because we are told who we are by everybody. Everybody yeah. tells you this is who you are, but if you choose not to know, you have no choice. Well, that's coming out weird. But if you choose not to know, you have to experience and find out. Ooh, I got a shiver from that. Yeah. So cool. So this is a deep insight. I mean, can we return? How did you how did you come upon 
this insight is is this part of what you you were you were taught when you were younger? Not really. When I go back to when I was younger, when I was younger, I was fighting to be who I am, because we yeah. may look at this and think it's all about like gender, sexuality and all that, but it's bigger than who we being. So I always say I was born a queen. I knew that I was a queen. I walked, it's kind of like when I came into this planet, even as a baby, I knew who the fuck I was. But I was right. born in a family, a very traditional family that was very like, yeah, very traditional, very cultured. And my memories, as much as there was love, but the love between me and my mom, was this is who I am. And she said, be like my children. And I was fighting to be who I am. Sure. So yeah. I grew up somehow with that wound of feeling not accepted. It's quite interesting because being a child, stubborn, rebellious, and often we may see this even in our children, or it's an experience that we had where you are rebelling and rebelling. It's kind of like no one can tell me who I am. I know who I am. But on the other hand, deep within, there is a wound that is just kind of like, can you just accept me as I am? Not feeling accepted is a big yes. wound. And I would say mm-hmm. for me, that was the thing where who I was, how I dressed up. And I still remember, I love to wear pants and my mom would be like, why don't you just wear dresses? And I still remember the first skirt that I bought. For me, it was like something stylish and all that. That was like the representation of me. So I was like, my mom is going to be proud because I bought all these kind of skirts and all that. And I wore them and trailed around and just, you see, I bought a skirt. It's like, why can't you just buy a normal skirt? I'm like, I'm never going to make this woman happy, am I? You know, <laughs> so that's where I come from. But on the other hand, as much as that is the wound that I was born in, going through life and a lot of things collapsing to an extent of being separated from my children, losing my corporate job, which was my identity at some point in time, you know, sure. it made me realize that the universe was happening for me. It kind of like stripped me of all the things that I had that somehow defined who I thought I was because I was not that, but I define myself with that because that's what the society tells us or that's what esteems us in the society. And through the pain, everything, the souls turn, pain, heart rates, up and downs, it was bringing me back to me. You know, so when this came through, it's quite interesting because I was just holding a master class and I found myself, I've said that I'm like, oh shit, that's good. (laughs) <laughs> that's good but that's deep you know in the sense of it's, it's deep when you are listening to it with your body you will feel your body as well something will happen yes. you'll get a tree sensation a knee jerk reaction whatever that is but on the other hand i always say this our soul always knows the truth so at times we may say oh i don't know that or whatever that's the mind that is loud but there is a, there, there is a time when our soul is kind of like oh shit you, yes. you, you listen with your soul especially when you let your mind right. get out of the way you allow your soul to express to you what you may have not allowed in if you're coming in with the mind with that too much knowing and all the stuff right right agree wholeheartedly and this is how i think how this is how i think we end up with sexuality is not something we choose gender is not something we choose many of our deep seated motivations and desires we know these, but we don't really know why we know them. And and I think you just said it. It's okay. it's our soul that's responding to the universe, and and yeah. uh, or it's not even responding, but it's it's in our soul. Can, can I ask? This is going to be a total tangent. I I have this. I believe that that each of us, our souls, exist for a purpose. Like the, there is a a particular lesson to learn. And we're just going to keep going through lives until finally that lesson like hits us in the head and we go, oh, okay, I learned it. Is is that part of your belief system? Do, do you believe with that or go with Absolutely. that? Absolutely. What we, it's, it's more like if you don't learn, if you don't heal, we repeat. But when we learn yes. something, when we heal something, we evolve, you know, because our soul, yeah, right. I mean, the whole thing that we're holding into, that's just like our, our mind. But when it comes to the soul, the soul is willing to evolve. This is why at times you're looking at a situation and it's kind of like, oh, we're holding into stories, poor me and stuff like that. But your soul wouldn't have brought that situation if you are the one who didn't have the codes to master right. that, whatever that you are meant to anchor here. So we come in through because we have it ingrained in us. We are the one, we, we are the ones who have to go first at times, you know? Mm-hmm. So when you 
looking around and it's kind of like, but no one is going through this. And what if you are meant to be the first? You understand? Whatever shit that you are meant to heal, whatever shit that you are mean, meant to express, because right. I was so to express something that is unique. So when we let go of yes. the comparison of others, me, whatever, you are missing on what your soul is here to express. And this is why at times it can be so loud when, when things get messy, more challenges. It's kind of like the soul that is screaming so loudly that this is not what I came here to be. I came here to be something greater because we always have that whisper, that subtle voice that is like, this is not who you are meant to be. You are bigger than that. You know, but if we listen to the loud pain, which often I always say 80% of the stuff that we go through, the emotions, the shame, the guilt and stuff that we feel, they're not ours. It's just our ancestors who are screaming. It's, it's all those voices that are within us. So if you hold and listen to this outside voices, even though it has become internal, then we're going to hold ourselves back. Ooh. I love all of this. I, you know, you brought up, it was just before we started recording, and I want to return to this now. You brought up that our names have energetic value, that that they're in some way connected to us. Obviously, I changed my name. I wasn't given the name Amethyst at birth. Um, in fact, I never intended to take the name Amethysta for what it's worth. A little bit of a story there. How how does how does the energy how does that work? And and like how does like am I still connected to my to the name given to me at birth? Somehow, yeah, <laughs> you are. Um, here's the thing. Like I said, I started with saying 80% of the stuff that we were experiencing is not ours. It's what we were born into. Is what we inherited. When you are born, oh, you are okay. given a name, right? And that name has a frequency. You know, doesn't matter. Sometimes, yeah, parents could be going through something and then they call you that particular name. Sometimes it could be the hope. And there's just a lot that can happen, even how you are accepted at birth. And when I talk about how you are accepted at birth, it's the moment you are just conceived when it's just like cells and all that. And imagine maybe your mother is young and it's kind of like, oh, my God, what am I going to do with this with this pregnancy, this child? Right. Oh, and or maybe the, the father is like, I bought that child. And it's like, no, I don't want to. Already you are getting all these imprints, whatever that is going around. It's all oh. imprinted in you. And then you are given yeah. this name that you are given wherever, whatever the motivation, this is like the frequency that is in that name. And not only yeah. that, you have a say name, you know, that you, you have a family, obviously you have a say name that you are born into. It's your name. And then the say name that you are born into still the frequency of the ancestors and everything is still there. Many generation, what has been happening right. around your, your, your ancestral lineage, you know, so we born into that is the energy that we have. And even when it comes to, to our identity. When someone asks you, you know, who are you, whether you are producing a passport or whatever, you're going to call your names. These are my names, you know, your, your, yeah. whatever name that you have and, 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 and your, 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 your say name, it has that imprint. And it's quite interesting because in my native language, when you're talking about your identity, even the identity card is called Omang. And Omang okay. in direct translation, who are you? Okay. Yeah. So when you are given the names, the, the first name is kind of like the ground, the, the, the foundation of what your parents yeah. gave you, the foundation of what you experienced, the foundation of your ancestral lineage and all that. So that's who you are. It creates that foundation. And then when you grow up, you're like, okay, fine. I don't, whatever. First thing, feel into the frequency of that name. You know, what is it that led for you to, to, to change that name, how did you feel about it? You know, because when you look at it, there are aspects of yourself, starting with the inner child, the adolescent child, all these aspects that relate to that. So this is why at times when I talk about the healing needs to happen, because anything that we do, because it's kind of like, I don't want this. And even when it comes to, I know a lot of healers, yeah, they'll be like, oh, just cut the cords and, and all that um, nonsense although it's not nonsense but it's nonsense in the sense of everything that you do the question is where you're coming from if you're coming through from i want to get rid of something i don't want this name because whatever energy that is what are you saying to the adolescent part of you that's related with this name what are you saying to that inner child and it's mm -hmm. not only that because there there is 
there's always two things, polarity, right? There is the good things and the bad things. So it's kind of like you get to go back. For instance, if we get to do the work together, you get to go back first thing even when you integrate in this inner child. This inner child get to understand that you are not, it's not about abandoning or rejecting who the inner child is and bring in the reasons. Everything has to be done in love, but the most important thing is whatever charges that were there needs to be dealt with and then integrate these aspects. Because if you're doing mm-hmm. it, it's kind of like you are basically cutting off these aspects and they will be making noise, you know, be louder. Oh, now you don't want me. Like, however, if at all you felt not accepted and fully loved by other people, it's kind of like these are the imprints that you are, it's like you are doing to yourself what they did to you. You understand? So now you've become oh. the, the one who abandons you because these aspects do not understand. They're still looking for acceptance right. from you. Yeah. Right, right. Ooh. Hmm. I, I understand what you're saying. The the idea that you have this, I mean, the whole lineage, you, you know, you have the energetics of, uh, or the, en- the energy of your, the entire familial line. I mean, going back all the way to the, to the dawn of time, you know. Yeah. Um, oh, what was I going to ask you? Uh, oh, I know what I was going to say. It's interesting because my, my given name, presumably everybody knows this anyway, but my given name was Robert and I've, I've never associated with a name. When I was a kid, they called me Robbie, which was hard. It's still hard wow. for me to say. I can't you use see, the you B my for buddy. Speech. Let me just, let me just, it's quite interesting. Did you see how my body reacted? Yes, I saw, right. I, thought, I, don't I was know wondering if maybe like, there was something was going like, on. Like, and then the whole anger and like, it's kind of like, that's, that's the name. Like when you say Robert, that's that like the expression is kind of like, like the whole body, I can feel all of that. And then my face is like. Right. Right. Wow. It didn't, it didn't work from, to me, it didn't work. When I was a Ooh, kid, they called me there's Robbie. There's a lot of energy. I know. And I couldn't, the thing is that I can't even pronounce it well. So it was like, you know, as a kid, I was Robbie Herrick, which is a hard name to say when you're like four, right? Um, and then I switched to Rob, which was still weird because I, I just can't say them. I can't say it. So when I finally ditched it, when I finally dropped it, um, I actually, I agree. I did let go and I abandoned abandoned that child to a certain extent. And then at the same time, I wonder because it was so wrong, because that's a masculine name and that's not what I needed. Um, how much did I abandon myself? How much did I actually abandon myself? Were my parents just wrong? Was my, yeah, let me stop there. Were my parents just wrong? What did I abandon? Sorry, that was a really disjointed way of asking this question. <laughs> I, mean, I think you got the point. Yeah, but um, I'm, I mean, I'm more into the energetics. It's quite interesting because the moment you say that name, a lot, a lot happened. And I, I it's, it's, it's your inner child as well. You know, that's like, it's kind of like it expresses through me. So at times I'll mm-hmm. do all sorts of facial expression, but it's kind of like, that's how you reacted to you. But I would say the question that I want to ask you, if you don't mind... <laughs> No. I'm sorry, that's what's coming through. It's kind of like what I, what I feel from your solar plexus, which is like your power send. I feel like I want to vomit. What was disgusting? <laughs> that's like that's like how you felt. Like you, there, there was like that disgust. Is it's like coming yes. to like there is something that needs to come out. Mm-hmm. So. I was actually named for my grandfather, but my father had the same name, just different middle name. So this, this name has been a family name. As far as I know, I think it was at least four, four generations back. But my father, my father claims there is some, there's a, a, I thought he was Welsh. Turns out he's British, but he was a poet, Robert Herrick. And this guy wrote poems about Julia. I don't know if you remember that line, gather ye rosebuds as ye may, I think is how the line goes. That's Robert Herrick. The point is that some, somehow we're all vaguely connected. So I have a strong reaction to that name now because it was my father's and I got along very poorly with my father. So losing it actually cleared out a lot of of 
a lot of anger that I think I directed toward myself just based on, on being named for, for people I, I didn't associate with um, and still don't. So I did, did that answer your question? I don't know if that I mean, helped or hindered. Yes, because yes, at the same time, it's quite like that, that a few things that came. First thing, I get a, a, a knee-jerk reaction on the masculine side. So it's kind of like that happens when like there is something that like there is, you know, when you get a knee reaction, kind of like you don't agree with something, you know. So yeah. like I'm getting that, but it also goes to your ancestors, you know. And it's quite interesting because you were named after your grandfather, you said. So often this, because I was named after my my father's sister as well, you know, and that's a huge one, you know, especially that you're named after the grandfather and we know how it is with patriarchy, men, how they feel. And now who you being, which totally is against whatever beliefs that they had, you know? So this is why it explains you felt how you felt. And I bet they also felt how they felt. So it's all like a mixture. This is why like there's a lot of anger even around, around that name. Like it's, it's, it's yes. all you and them all mixed together and the disgust, which could be you know, it's kind of like, like discussed about you and discussed about all this sexuality thing. So it's kind of like, it's, it's a mixture of things where it's like chaotic. And there is also like a knee jerk reaction towards you and towards whatever they wanted you to be. Because even when I talk about, especially the name where we are named after other people, not only is you are you getting the name, like you're getting the first thing, your ancestral lineage is in that same name, and then you are getting the name that has been passed on and with different personality, right. with different beliefs, with very whatever that, that was, you know, because what I felt as well, it's kind of like I felt, I, I don't even know what to call it, but it was more like, the submission or something like that, like more leaning, like my neck went literally like this, you know, back like to the, to the feminine where it's kind of like, there is that whatever submission, you know, like mm-hmm. what, what happened when, yeah. So there is that, which, uh, it, it is a lot. <laughs> there is a lot there. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've actually, you know, I've done actually done quite a bit around, um, like trying to connect with, with my lineage, um, yeah. through, through a, a, a program, a program, um, that's not that important, but so I've tried to go, to go back and sort of a, connect to it and address it. And it's interesting. One of the, one of the, um, insights that I had, my father adored his father. He named me after his father because, you know, he thought that his father, well, my grand. Let me try this again. My father thought my grandfather was just amazing. And, and I, I never knew, I think he died in 1971. I was born in 1970. So I never had much, any relationship with him, with my grandfather, but my father would say, Oh, he was the greatest thing ever. But my father very clearly did not like me. And so there was a, and I don't know why. I mean, there's, there's a, I mean, you know, I've now realized it was never about me. It was always about him, but that was sort of something hanging over is that I've been named for this person and I'm apparently a disappointment in some way to this name. Cause this name was originally carried by somebody who was an amazing person. And yet my father hit me. So what, what was, what was wrong with me? So I, I think that's part of why I have such a strong reaction to, to the name. Yeah, there was a lot of processing I had to do, and and uh, lose, losing the name first was was a huge. Uh, it was very it was very important to me for healing. There was a huge wound. Um, I actually didn't want to talk about me. I'm. <laughs> This turned I into mean, a yeah, it's, it's, it's quite interesting because it's 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 because of the name because even like when you when my throat is coming like that it's kind of like you could not even express yourself as you are with that name you know right. because you were wearing, right. you were wearing the name that was not you and even when it comes mm-hmm. to like when you said your father was more proud of was more was like for 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 him like he was idolizing this this man who is his father and he was amazing but every time the question is amazing according to who 
you know, according to the tribal, right, right. proprietor, family culture and all that, do they, do they even get to know who he was in truth? I doubt so. You know, people were just Good following point. whatever that they were following, you know. So it's just yeah. that, I mean, even if we're talking about you, but it just goes deep to show the names, like even with the energetics that came around it to show that, yeah, there is there is a lot there when it comes to our names. And um, this in the name is, is from what came through. Obviously, it was vital, but the most important thing is what is vital is now for you to do the healing between your other aspects, you know, instead of right. like, okay, this is like the understanding that is coming through. But on the other hand, this is my connection to me, you know, even though I was called and related with this thing and however yeah. that you felt about yourself, because it's never really about you. It's, it's a baggage to be named even after someone, you know, because I have a story as well where I was called after my father's my father's sister and uh growing up it's kind of like i was just called oh the, like the old woman you know all that and it what i loved about that was just like the privilege that come that came with when i'm around adults i could speak all the shit and it's kind of like they just let really? it pass because because somehow I'm this old woman. So so yeah. I had <laughs> that was the advantage of taking this name because I was always excused when I said whatever that I said that normally children wouldn't be allowed to say to elders, you know. So after my parents, my mom died. My I lost my father when I was fourteen, and my mother when I was mm. like after I turned thirty. So when I was relocating, I decided to take my birth certificate, and I was like, "Why is my name not here?" Like that middle name of being named after my my father's sister. So I put it in my birth certificate, you know. But when I was going through a lot of stuff, I still remember there was a time when I was just like, "This question just came before I slept. Do you want to know who you are?" And I was like, "Yeah." And as soon as yeah. Nothing came, but as soon as I was just about to sleep, I kind of like wait, went into a trance and I started like, it was just like a natural thing that came to say all my names. But when it comes to that, that, that name of my, my father's sister, I couldn't like, I couldn't say it out. And then it's kind of like uh-huh. another portal open and I found myself in a different place and I could observe what was happening back then where my father and mother were getting married and, uh, and then I was born and my father's family were like, no, we can't, uh, like, she can't be called after, you know, like our sister or our mother, like the, those those women's children, you know, this woman, like they looked down on my mother and called her names. And it's kind of like anything that comes with her, it's whatever, it's not allowed in the, in the family. And this is, this is like my family. This is like my father's family. This is the same name that I carry, you know? So- sure. That was like clear that as much as I'm carrying this name, somehow there was a point when I was not fully accepted. And uh, I thought like the fight was between me and my mom of like, oh, I'm not like other children or whatever. But it went deeper to say, even in your ancestral lineage, especially on your on your father's side, when you were born, this is how they felt because they looked down on the family. Right. So it's, it's many things when you are pregnant, maybe you don't want the child or the father is not there and all this thing. And it creates all this abandonment because I talk a lot, especially when it comes to ancestral lineages, about this core wounds of betrayal, abandonment, abuse and rejection. One or the other we experience that, whether it's in relationship with our parents or ancestral lineage, where often it's not like it's energetical, it doesn't happen in like physical form, or we experience that in relationships. But at the core of it, you realize that when we go back to our roots, there is somewhere where this wounds are anchored. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, you, a lot of your work also has to do with with sex and sexuality, and and we were talking a little bit about how you know there's a huge role that our ability to accept ourselves plays into our ability to express ourselves like sexually. Cause I'm and now I'm trying to figure out how to ask this question because we've been talking about ancestral lineage that we don't, hmm, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to just say this. It's going to come out sounding weird, but please bear with me. Cause like we don't presumably end up, trying to have sex with our ancestors, presumably. And I guess I figure, you know, the the energy of, of having sex in a relationship, a personal relationship, would only be the person. How, how does all this, 
how does all this fit together into into sex and sexuality? Like, am, am I misrepresenting this first of all, what you were saying earlier? <laughs> Um, coming back to the sexual energy, it's like it's a natural thing. No one is, when, when we are born, no one is sat down and told, oh, this is how you're going to feel. You're going to feel this desire like, oh, you want to sleep with a man or you want to sleep with a woman or whatever. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that just happens naturally. But when we look at it, whether it's a cultural, tribal or whatever, there is patriarchy, I would say patriarchy created it the way it created it. And I always say patriarchy has made women powerless by shutting off their hearts. By, by, yes. It made men powerless by shutting off their hearts and it made women powerless by shutting off their womb. That is, mm. for them to have control, especially over women, it was for them to understand that when it comes to even having sex and all that, it's more for procreation only or to serve men. This is why they emphasize the importance of being married before you can have sex, you know. But on the other hand, there is all these desires that that we have. And when we go back, even when it comes to sex and the abuse that happened in, in the past, a, a woman did not even have a say. You know, it's kind of like you are married, so yeah. that means whenever I want, you better open your legs and let me in, you know. So we yeah. women didn't have any connection to their to their bodies and men as well they didn't they were not out they were not they were conditioned not to feel they thought they believed that feeling is more a weakness you know so that means mm. even when it comes to having sex is more an activity rather than a deep soul connection but when you look at all that it also disconnects us from like it, it anchors all these things in darkness, like I say, when it comes to sex, it's kind of like, I have to get rid of something. Let's get in the room, in the dark, switch off the lights and everything, and let's do what we do. And then from there, we just kind of like nothing happened and all that. We don't even talk about it. What, what is it that we desire? Right. How can I satisfy you? Why do you love to be touched? To explore all this fantasy, but yet our mind always goes there, you know, and all the abuse that happened, because when we look at it, even when it comes to sexual abuse, there is abuse that even happened in families, you know, where some oh, yeah. at times you, some people are experiencing sexual abuse, like being abused by men. But at times when you go back to ancestral lineage, you realize that there was a sex at times there is that where the grandmother or the whatever um, uncle sleeps with whoever, but it's never talked about because it's like a shame. Don't even dare say a thing. A father sleeps with his children. It was just so messy. Rape happened, but we don't talk about yeah. it. And then we experience it. And even us as women, you know, I always say I'm still wishing for the time when, it, when a girl child and boy child can be can feel safe in their sexuality as in like we can hold space and encourage them to embrace who they are without shame yeah. because when i look at it at times because we want to protect our children from all the darkness that comes with the whole sexuality and all that but what we do is shame them you know when you sleep with a child with a man you're gonna you're gonna fall pregnant or a lot of things that are gonna happen we talk about that or even when someone is like they have because there are people who exude the sexual energy naturally. And even us as women, we turn around and call them name bitches, this and that. You know, they want to sleep right. with all, men. all they have is just genitals, you know, because even when it comes to our body, we don't connect with our body and honor this body for what it is and understand that when it comes to our sexual energy, it doesn't matter shape or form or whatever. It's like the energy that is within us, it's natural. And that's what makes us attractive when we embrace this. But we have been twisted to believe that I have to have like a model kind of body and, and, and all that. We don't embrace and we don't love ourselves for us. We love yeah. and appreciate ourselves based on a third person's perspective. You know, do men love me? Is it okay for me to, to feel sex in my body? It depends on who is saying yes to us or not outside, not us for ourselves. So all these things is something that has been happening for many generations and is the energy that we are also creating from. Yes. Okay. So that, I got that. Thank you. Um, yeah, that hit me a little hard. I don't know if you, I got a little emotional there for a moment because I felt that. Yeah, yeah. We, we, all we do is stick shame, heap shame on top of something that should be a celebration of who we are and, and just the love of, of life and the, 
the what made me emotional because we started talking a little bit about it that how after I had gender affirming surgery just recently only a month ago now I had these profound realizations of how much my body is actually tied into like my my sense of how I fit into the universe and I just didn't expect that at, at all but I think you just <laughs> I think you just explained that um so that hit me kind of hard. Yeah. It's crazy how interconnected all these things are. I, I know we want not to believe that our bodies are important, um, but they they play huge roles in everything, yeah. especially when it comes into shame. Um, yeah. we, we're not pretty enough. We're not handsome enough. We're not muscular enough. We're, we're too fat. We're too thin too big a boobs, too small a boobs, you know, uh, it just keeps going. And we carry that with us. Yeah. Always. Oh, I think I'm dropping a lot of <laughs> psychic weight for a moment here. Um, how about if I stop talking? <laughs> could, 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 go, go further with that. I'm sorry, because I'm losing all train of thought. It's, it's, and so it's fine. Cute. And this is the moment, you know, what I love about what is actually happening and you also embracing how you're feeling. Remember when you go back to the beginning, don't yes. tell yourself anything, but allow your body to communicate. And at times it can yeah. be emotions that are showing up. And here's the thing, even when it comes to having that sexual experience, I always talk about the sexual activity and the deep sexual soul connection and when you are with somebody who can hold you and take you to places because when you're talking about intimacy intimacy loves honesty are you fully honest with who you are what you love what you desire are you open yeah. are you honest are you vulnerable right so it's the space that we get to create you know when we are in that moment and when you are with somebody who is fully open and can hold that space you can have sex and in the moment when you are having that orgasm, you start tearing up instead, like instead of just like having the genital orgasm, you're having that hard orgasm and you start crying. The question is, are you with somebody who's going to see your beauty even through those emotions or is somebody who's thinking of sex just from the mind? Right. So it's one of those things like where things come through, you feel a certain way and then we get to embrace all of that to be present because it's part of the beauty, it's part of the creation. You know, when I say we get to make love with the universe, we get to make love with life. It's us connecting to all of us and understanding that everything plays a role and everything deserves to be here. Because when we're having this conversation, we are pulling all the chairs and saying all the shadows, all the emotions, everything you are allowed to be present. You are allowed to be here. And we honor all that you are bringing through. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I've had one of those. <clears throat> I'm a little husky now. I've had one of those heart orgasms. And it didn't happen until I'd started transitioning gender because it was so it was so hidden it was so yeah. buried deep inside yeah. um and it's truly amazing i i'm only i haven't had a chance to use you know these new parts yet yeah. and i'm really curious how that's gonna how that's gonna change everything because i think the expression i think i will be able to feel I don't know if I want to use the word natural, real, seen, felt, whole. I, you know, I'm not sure what word I want to use, but I, I see where you're coming from. How all of yeah. this is just one one big thread. Um, I I had a a realization occur to me because you brought up um, choose not to know. And, and earlier, earlier you made a point that that especially in the the um, the LGBTQ community, there's this idea of coming out, yeah. right? That we have to to come out. We have to to admit in some ways, you know, yeah. we have to admit yeah. to who we are. Whereas, not in the LGBTQ community, like it's just sure that's who you are. 
choosing not to know is both internal and external. Yeah. We need to listen to ourselves, but like we need to listen to other people. And our initial assumption is cisgender, heterosexual, going to carry the shame of sex with you your entire life. That's a bummer. And this is what this is what you work on, right? We, you work on helping people oh, eject. What's the word I want to use? Excrete that shame. Absolutely. To, yeah. To please tell, that's, me, tell uh, me more that's, about that. That's what that. I do because, uh, like I said, just give you an example of what happened when we started talking about the name that you use and the inner child, you know, mm. and all the emotions that came through. You know, the difference when it comes to my work is that. It's not, I'm not working from the mind. I can have a conversation mm -hmm. with you, but I'm also aware of, it's kind of like I'm allowing the body to communicate with me. What is it that needs to sure. be attended? You know, and even when you mention in some of the ways it held, you know, because the moment when you told me that you are feeling emotional, I just felt, I felt that coming through and it was kind of like grief as well that came through, but showing from your masculine side. Because even when you're talking about masculine and feminine, this is why when you say, it's going to feel natural when I do that because that's how you feel. You know, this is like when you are in your natural feeling, how you are natural to you and nobody can tell you what is natural to you except you because you are the one who gets to feel that, right? Right. So, but we have both the masculine and the the, 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 the feminine energy. The question is, which one is more dominant? This is, and this is what is big when it comes to who somebody is identifying as. It's more like, this is what is dominant for me. This is like my natural thing. Because at times, even when you're talking about the masculine, especially where at times I'm led to the mask, the, the family. And at times it's kind of like, when I connect with somebody, I will feel maybe the masculine is more louder. Like there is loud, maybe criticizing masculine energy that is coming through. And, and only to know that the masculine loud energy that is critical at times it's not even it's not the man it's just the masculine the, the, the woman who is more masculine yes. and all that yeah so it's, it's not about it's not about woman men and all that that's just like the, the the limitation of the the human of the ego right so when i yes. connect with somebody i get to know what really needs attention i spoke about ancestors for me when it comes to ancestors it's vital first thing i talk about disconnecting um, first thing you get to heal whatever that is there that is binding you to that because there's vows, contracts and agreements and then a lot of things, hexes, curses and a lot of that. So that needs to be dealt with and then you disconnect so that you can be your own person, your own unique signature blueprint, which is like, how is it that Amethyst would love to express herself in this lifetime what what is that her soul signature is here to express as you know so when you connect to your unique signature blueprint often when i go there it's quite interesting because whether we're going to end up how we're going to end up at the inner child at times i can talk about the inner child and before i know it i'm already in the sexual energy because the inner <laughs> child may come through and as we're dealing with the inner child who may be feeling unheard or unseen and it's kind of like they open another door of, look, this is what happened. Like, it just happens like that. was kind of like, I was abused. This is what happened. I was molested here. And at times we go even beyond this lifetime where the inner child is taking me to show what really transpired, you know. Yes. And when you integrate this inner child, it's kind of like it activates that, so what I call soul confidence, you know, because it's like the confidence of your existence is not a yes. mistake that you are here, right? Yes. So yes. that's like magical. And then we go, to, when it comes to the, 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 your sexual energy, it's more like, what is it that you desire? You know, like your true authentic desires, not what everybody wants. And that is also, even when it comes to your sexual energy, it's connected to your purpose. You know, it, when you connect and embrace who you are, when you embrace your sexual energy, it leads to your purpose. It also leads to, it leads to your finances. When you are, have that shame, guilt, and all that, you realize that one or the other, it affects this. You may work hard and it's kind of like, okay, fine, I'm doing well financially. But on the other hand, the more you have money, it's kind of like it has to go out immediately. Something breaks down or something or you know, or you have the money, but on the other hand, you are spending it on trying to be something, something or somebody that you are not, you know, so you still don't get to enjoy whatever resources that you have because you are more trying to keep up with the fake and phony aspect that does not exist instead of you, yes. you truly are and showing up as that. And I love also being authentic as you because it's more 
even let's let, let's just uh like there are so many things especially when it comes to embodiment as in like you being fully in the body and shame as especially when it comes to to like the gender identity you know when you are ashamed of who you are it's kind of like you are in this body that you don't like you are in this body that you are ashamed of so you don't really get to occupy your body because oh, in right. your mind it's like this is who i am and then like as like according to the identity that you're given but when it comes to your body you feel different there's a conflict that is happening within yes. you know and then when it comes to other people, it's kind of like sometimes there is trauma that happened and or even it was like lots of dysfunction. So for you to survive the dysfunction that was happening is for you to be in the mind and create this imaginary thing. You are not in the body and that opens the door to a lot of yes. things, whether it's uh, it's attachments, entities and all that, that gets to occupy your body. So when it comes to my work, it's kind of like we get to uplift all, all these things, clear all these things, and then you can come back in the body and embody your who you are in truth, you know, your magic, because your magic is within you, it's not outside. Oh, absolutely. No, I love, I love that. The idea of shame, I mean, I think social expectations are a huge tool. I mean, because shame is really the way, hmm, shame is really the way social environments enforce and maintain themselves. Because you have parents who go, ah, oh, you're not living up to whatever it is. It doesn't even have to be gender identity. It could be, well, your mother is a doctor. I'm a doctor. Yeah. You're supposed to be a whatever, right? I mean, it yeah. can, it could be many different expectations. Who you marry and all skirt, that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Going back to that first skirt that you bought and loved. I mean, well, couldn't you have bought a normal skirt? It's it was a social expectation that. Yeah. Yeah. We just keep. I mean, I had said earlier, we keep piling shame on top of shame and it's, it's all through us. It's every facet of us, every pillar that, that, that holds up our, our identity yeah. ends up being shame. You know, if it's riddled with shame. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how to end that sentence, but and then what still, I love, if we what are I all shame, about, yeah. Like we said, shame disconnects us from ourselves. It disconnects us from source. You know, I don't, I don't, yeah, that's yes, not what you call yes. it. You call it God, universe, source, whatever name that you are associating with the higher power, it disconnects you to that because you feel small, you feel unworthy, you feel dirty and, and all yes, that. Yes. And when you are living in that energy, even when, when it comes to who you're being, what you're creating, your desires, you disconnect. When it comes to emotions, as in like, how am I really feeling? You disconnect because then you end up going through life. You are, you you just exist. You are not alive. You know, you go through right. life totally numb. And this is also what leads to, to manifestation of a lot of things, whether it's um, uh, sexual transmitted disease, whether it's all this disease that gets that we, that gets to we, whatever people are diagnosed with. I mean, I work with a lot of people, a lot of stuff, even tumors and cysts and all that. When you oh, look wow. at it, all of that is kind of like the self-hatred because as much as like we don't like what the society wants us to be, but at the same time, this is like what is accepted. Who, What are they going to say? Like there is the judge that is always sitting in, in front of us, judging everything that yeah. we do. When you live life through that, you can't, you don't love yourself and you don't even give whatever that your soul is here to express, to give birth to. You don't give right. that a chance to right. express itself because you are being, you are trying to fit in whatever that, whatever categories and all the boxes that are around you, you know, so it suppresses your true desires. This is why I love the sexual energy because it's a natural attraction that happens. You are pulled towards something. And even when it comes to creation, it's just like what inspiration is calling me? What is it that I'm called to give birth to? You go towards that. But when we are mm. living in shame and guilt and all the fears, it's kind of like we are always running away from something. So that means we are creating from disparation. And disparation creates more situations to be disparate of. Yes. Yes. You know, the, the worst part too, is that all of these social expectations, we, we come to believe that society is everybody except us, that yeah. everybody except us is able to have expectations of who we are. And, and we're not, we're not allowed to have expectations of who we are. And I guess one of the one of the big points, and I think this, these, my point and your point dovetail, one of the things that I've tried to, to, to say in my work is that we're each a part of society. Society is only a, 
a, a group of individuals and us learning to shrug off. I don't know that I want to use that word, but us learning to, to take social expectations only as a framework is important for actually the evolution of the social environment. Cause we don't want to be the same people who, you know, we're in the French revolution. We don't want to be the same people who, you know, our fathers, our mothers, we don't want to be these people. And if we don't accept who we are and change the social environment, then, then it never improves. It never grows. It never evolves. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's one of the biggest points is just to be able to say. I love that. And it's quite interesting because, um, I was, there was a time when I was writing down this post that just like came through, then I wrote it and after I was like, hmm. So I didn't post it. And why is that? Because I, I, my what I was called to, what I was writing about was like letting off guilt. You know, even mm. there are people who, especially when you're talking about sexual abuse, there are people who have committed that or somehow they've been linked to that. And because they did that, whatever that led to that, they're living in guilt. So mes- the message was like, you are not helping the collective consciousness by holding and carrying this guilt. So it's high time yes. you come forth and heal. And I felt like if I, m- like my mind coming from the, 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 the filter of the society's expectations and all that, I was like, who, if I post it, it's going to be interpreted as if I am supporting the people who perform that Con- but on the other right. hand condoning the yeah does it really help for them to go through life carrying this baggage instead of le- releasing it transmuting it and releasing it's kind of like you are taking something from the collective conscious to lighten the load that is affecting who we being you know and it's just yes. like you to say whatever whoever that you are called to be whatever that you are here to express if you are looking at our outside and be like oh they're doing this, this is what they expect and get bitter about everybody else but you are not calling up yourself to say you know what it's my responsibility to honor who I am, to choose exactly what turns me on, to choose me before I can put in front of me how other people are going to accept me. Because if that's what you came here for, the cause that you are here to to express in this lifetime, right now is what is needed for things to change. We are paving a way to those who are going to come after us. And we are not doing anyone any favor by trying to fit in. And I always say this even when it comes to cheating people. People may not like it, but the truth of it is, <laughs> if you're going through life, kind of like, oh, people are just inauthentic, people are fake and all that, like you are not happy with the people that you attract or people that surround you, or even in relationship where it's kind of like, I attract these people who are just cheaters and all that. The truth of it is, somehow, somewhere, we are cheating ourselves. We are undermining who we are. We are disrespecting ourselves. We are not being authentic to ourselves. So it starts with, with us looking in the mirror to say, how the fuck am I creating this? How the fuck am I allowing this in my life? Right. You know, I'm willing to choose differently. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm one, who, one person who was, like, in relationships where I felt disrespected in so many ways. But it was mind-blowing when I was just, like, sitting in a meditation and the question that came through was, like, how are you dis- disrespecting yourself? And I'm like, what the fuck yeah. does that mean? But it was like, I got a download. It's kind of like even when I look at the broken people that I attracted and a part of me wanting to rescue them, it was still part of my work. Like my gift was expressing itself. I read into their timelines and realized that this is what is possible for them. But on the other hand, whether it's potential that they have, it means no shit if they're not willing to unleash that. But it was like yeah. I was projecting my own potential to these people. I was being called to be bigger and do what I came here to do because there are people who may want to receive the healing and be who they're meant to be. There are people who are comfortable in their smallness, in their addiction, in their pain. So if I want, I'm attracting these people even when it comes to sexual energy. I'm, let me say I was good in attracting people who had somehow alcohol addictions and stuff, you know, but uh, any kind of addiction is kind of like, it lowers your vibration. That there, there, there was a period where, like, somebody who at times would go for two weeks or three weeks not waking or anything, just drinking. And let, let's now look at it in the sense of just a relationship. Everything is fine. And I still remember that at the time we traveled, we went to Greece and everything was perfect. Greece was, like, mind-blowing for me. And then we just come back. When we come back, somebody's, like, deciding to go there. So it's kind of like, even to my system, a complete shock. 
you know, we are all this good and amazing and, and then all of a sudden you are off and when somebody goes there, like, they shut me off. So completely shut off, going through that that period of his, watching all these horror movies and everything and I'm worried even about him and then after that three weeks or something like that, then we have to have sex. Of course, I'm a sexual active person. There are times when I just did it because, you know, it's been a while. But on the other hand, from there, I'll feel dirty, you know, because I always yeah, say it right, becomes right. sexual energy. When you, here's the thing, when it comes to even, even like the trauma that we experience in the body, when you someone is not fully connected to you, like emotional, when there's no emotional connection, but you are just, willing to have sex with somebody hoping that maybe they'll love you or just because there is a desire that you have yes. your body's not right. ready there's no emotional connection so when you allow that to happen the penetration to happen when your body's not ready you are also traumatizing your body because either you feel pain or eventually you just become numb to yourself so most people are had in relationships because they just want to be penetrated hoping that they want to be loved but they do that yeah. when their body's not ready you allow yourself to be penetrated when there's no emotional connection and from there it's kind of like it, it, it feels dirty i know i know how i felt where it's kind of like at times it's kind of like even when someone has been drinking for that long what kind of like sexual <laughs> you know there's no even when it comes to just like the activity itself it's kind of like out there where it's kind of like why the fuck right. do I want my desires <laughs> why, why would i even do that you know but with time i connected to I learned to connect and use my energy first and to create what I desire and to connect with my energy for me. And often even when I talk to people like how, what is your individual connection to a sexual energy? People often talk about like, oh, I'm in a relationship. No, it's not about a relationship. It's your personal connection to this energy. How connected yeah. are to it, even when it comes to where there's pleasure or creating from this, because it's a healing energy at the same time. That's what I love about sexual energy. And if you don't want to use it for yourself, you want to attack people who are going to come and heal in it. This is where at times you will have people come through, you sleep yeah. with them, and then it's kind of like they're, they're just being renewed. From there, everything in their life is good. They have penetrated you. They've left all this whatever in you, especially even when you look at men and women. Men do not feel their emotions. So how do they release them? Through sexual intercourse. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You can see that. <laughs> with all the weapons that, that, uh, you know, we have all over the world, right? Yes. Um, you, you brought this, you brought up the point. Did you ever make that post about, about even if you were a sexual abuser, you need to be able to lose the, the, the energy. Did you make that post? I, I always talk about here and there. I always talk about this, but it's something okay. that is, it, it's something that is that is it's something that is vital, you know. Because um, even when someone, let me just say, you're in a relationship with somebody, you know, when it comes to sexual energy, like there's a measure that happens on a deeper level. That's why I say this is like sexual energy. And it's also spiritual. It connects you with somebody beyond. Mm -hmm. I'm just in a relationship with somebody. So if somebody, let me say, all things are good, and then you part, and somebody has feels a certain way about you, and there are somewhere you are somewhere, and maybe pop in their mind and kind of like that stupid bitch or whatever they call curse you out and all that and when you feel it kind of like you know body's gonna feel like it's you who is talking to yourself like that but you are that yeah. feeling with your energy and on the other hand what is also mind-blowing and this used to get me before i got to know my gifts i didn't know because like when i i get to basically step into other people's energy fields and know what the heck is going on so before i embrace my gift fully I would have people who connect with people and then from there I'm just like all oh, this sexual whatever and I'm like oh my god I don't know I didn't think about that about this person but somehow this is expressing itself and I'm like hmm maybe something good is gonna come out of that fuck no that was like their projection they were fantasizing <laughs> about me and I'm sure in that imprint and I'm thinking that maybe it's me who maybe there's a chance that something will come through no it's just them who are thinking of sleeping with me <laughs> So it's a sure. powerful energy, you know? All of this takes our ability to, to be honest with ourselves, though. I mean, it's in fact, actually, I'm gonna, we can bring it right back to the choose not to know and then figure out what you're feeling. Because I, there's a, sorry, this is going to take a bit to, to back into. There's a great philosopher, 
I, I te technically a band from the 19. So is Depeche Mode. Um, <laughs> great philosophers, close enough. Depeche Mode. Um, they had a song called Policy of Truth. Mm -hmm. And I've always, I do remember the song. I wish I could remember the, the lyrics exactly, but you'll always wonder why, I don't know, how things could have gone if you'd only lied. I'm trying to remember what it was. I, but I the point that, was yeah. to say, <laughs> okay, do you remember that vaguely? Yeah. The, the point of the song being that you do more harm by telling somebody you had an affair with somebody than if you would just let it go and then that person doesn't feel that pain. But actually, maybe I'll stop there because I, because I, I've always wondered both ways. Because you go, well, yeah, if you if you hold on to the pain, you can keep somebody else from hurting. But keeping somebody else from hurting means that ultimately the universe doesn't move forward. Is is I believe how you how you put it earlier. I love, I, love, I love that. And then it still goes back to the truth, the truth heads, you know. And here's the thing. Even for us to know what is true for us. Mm, let me say, because yeah. I, I still remember, I can't remember which book, whether it was Conversation with God or something like that. I can't remember if it's that book, but I know I came through this somewhere where it's kind of like, when, you, when someone asked, what about cheating, you know, merit and then infidelity and all that, you know, is that a, a okay? Because when it comes to like the highest truth that uh, there's no judgment, you know, whatever that you do. And then it's kind of like, but what if I'm cheating? The question is, how do you feel about that? You know, do yeah. you go out and, 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 and be with another partner, have that orgasmic sex, and then you come back home and it feels like nothing happened, like your conscious, your conscious is, is that dead, or there is a bit of you that feels like what I'm doing is not right, you know, because if I don't feel, if I feel shit about it, then definitely it's not right, you know, whether I tell somebody is the guilt that is eating me within, if I can't live with myself, then that means I'm not doing that person any favor, because if I get to I be see. with somebody that means I'm building whatever that I'm building on a lie. And I feel at the same time it's selfish because I'm taking away the power for that person to make their own choice. Mm. I cheated on okay. you. And whatever reasons that we may try to give, but the truth of it is I cheated on you. So now the question is, how do we proceed? And for me, even when it comes to like whether cheating happened, uh, like when I meet, when work with women, whether it's women who are married or men who are married, and it's kind of like, yeah, but this happened and all that. Here's the thing. People always say, oh, in a relationship, it's more about friendship. Sex is not that important. <laughs> Fuck that shit because <laughs> people, people, they will say that and stay in that relationship, but they will look for all that out there. You understand? Yes. And even, if, even yes. if you are a man and you are not able to be present and satisfy your partner, especially, I always say, often a, a woman will cheat for emotional, deep connection and all that. Yes, right. You know, because on the other hand, again, if you are with a man who can give you all of that, trust me, the sex is going to be orgasmic. A man who mm -hmm. is emotionally available, who can meet you there, they can take you to places you've never been. You understand? Right. But a man who is emotionally disconnected chances are when it comes to sex it's just like an activity you know i'm just gonna be in fast and and ride whatever then done so what the fuck are you doing you know, you know? Right. so when they meet somebody who can hold them cheating is gonna happen so for for me it's kind of like getting to understand where are you coming from what is it that you need and is it something that can because when it comes to relationships and marriages the relation, the reason why they fail is because there's no communication and you can imagine people don't communicate like when you talk about normal things everyday things but now imagine sex because we are ashamed and have afraid we have problems with admitting our own desires to ourselves like this is my franchise this is what i decide you know even when you're sitting there by yourself and having all these things kind of, you can catch yourself and kind of like what the fuck am i thinking you know and you judge yourself for having those thoughts and desires you know so right right now when it comes to communicating that with the other person it becomes even more difficult so it comes to the point where we get to be honest with ourselves what is it that I, what drove me to that? What is it that I need? And then am I willing yeah. to be with the partner and can we work through it together so that I can know what they need, what I need, and we can work together because sex, relationship, everything, emotions, is something that we need to work on. Whatever that you don't 
work on your own nature it, it dies eventually for a relationship to bloom grow we need to 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 also invest on it right so yeah. the, to give the other person the power and the choice to say it has me to know that you cheated but i love you i'm willing to work on this or i just love you so much but you broke the trust that i had and i want out because that may be an opportunity. Probably you don't even love them. You love the fact that they provide the security, which could be finances. Because even though we don't admit, yeah. admit most of the marriages that are there, relationship is kind of like, it's more like on business purpose. Okay, fine. I know what they bring and all that. And we're going to sit there, but there's no love. There's no that deep connection. So when you are honest with somebody, it's kind of like respecting that you may not yeah. give them the truth and I mean the, the, the love that they need. So you're going to respect them and give them an opportunity to maybe find something that they are meant to find in the future, you know. That's being of service. It may hurt, yes. but it's also being of service. And, and when it comes to relationship, when I was going through my divorce, I realized that we are not hurt by love because we have this illusion that, oh, don't love too much. You're going to head, head. You are not head because you love too much. Right. You are head because you don't love yourself enough. That's it. Oh, because if you love okay. yourself enough, you wouldn't be in those situations. And we are not head because the relationship is over. We are head because we shut off our hearts not to feel the love of somebody who we could not be with. So it's kind of like, oh, you live in me. Okay, I don't want to feel any love for you. I'm going to shut parts of me that appreciated all this thing about you because if you can't be with me, why should I continue to love you? And yeah. loving somebody who can't be with you, it has, but at the same time, it's liberating because it opens all, it shatters all the walls that we have been conditioned to build when when we kind of like get rejected and all that. And it also expands, creates more space for you to receive. When you allow yourself to feel embraced kind of like i love this person i appreciate this because it's more like you are loving parts of yourself that you loved in that person because when you fall in love, yes, we fall right. in love with ourselves right so now imagine if a part of you fell in love with this person and then because now they can't be with you you take all parts of you and him and you close all that in the cave and you think you're gonna move on no part of you is gonna be in that cave again because you are stuck in, yes. in that cave with that person you know, so right, we are not hurt right. by love. We are hurt by the denial of the love that is present. I see. I think that was beautiful. And so, sorry, Depeche Mode. Turns out you're wrong. So, thank you. <laughs> <That was laughs> I've been thinking about that for. Been thinking about that forever. So, um, we're we're running low on time. I got to tell you, <laughs> we could probably you and I could probably sit here and talk for the next two days. And Absolutely. And I'm, I'm sorry we. <laughs> I'm sorry we can't. Um, can you <clears throat> can you tell the audience where where can we find you on the internet? How can people learn more about you and your work, and in particular to get in touch with you to to work on themselves? I, I love that, and and that's the best that's the best response actually. Don't don't follow me and go to my website and all that. Just book the damn call and let's have a deeper conversation. There is a link that I'm yeah. gonna share with Amethyst, uh, and I call it orgasmic clarity. So I'm just giving a 45 minutes intro into the African ancient quantum medicine, where we're gonna dive deep and find out what is it that is interfering with your success and freedom. And from there you can choose whether you wanna dive deeper with me or you're just fine knowing what you know. And this is what I tell people. Awareness is not healing. You can be aware of something. And if you wear awareness as a crown, it's going to wear you as a crown. Because you are aware, but on the other hand, it's not healed. So I'm going to share a link with you, but I'm available at howmusinme.com. Okay. My website is there. Uh, but the most important thing that I can just say is book a call. You know, on social media, it's howmutzeme or howmutzeme.magneticconfidence in Instagram and TikTok, I believe. So, yeah. Okay. But most importantly, book the call. A lot of people know a lot and life is not changing because information is not transformation. Right. Oh, my gosh. That's a beautiful way. <laughs> what a beautiful way of saying that. The inf information is not transformation. Uh, that is beautiful. <clears throat> All right. Well, let me... Ugh. Let me go ahead and shut down the recording. What a beautiful, thank you so much, first of all, for everything that you've, that you've given me in this past hour and 10 minutes. Thank you so much. <laughs> My pleasure. So 
I will also say thank you to all of our listeners. Um, my name is Amethyst Deherrick. I've been speaking with Chao Motsame about just all kinds of amazing things on Gender Identity Weekly, including uh, loving yourself. Um, gosh, Depeche Mode. I have to, I have to keep bringing that up. But I think the biggest points: information is not transformation, and we need to choose not to know but to experience. So yeah. thank you again. Thanks so much. Thank you, and I wish you all a wonderful, magical, and orgasmic day, morning, night, whenever you're watching this. <laughs> thank you.